Hi, this is Josh with a presentation on fixed star formal help in the Piscis Austrinus constellation known as the Southern Fish. So formal help is positioned at the mouth of the fish you'll see here in this picture. Within this Piscis Austrinus constellation, it is the alpha star within the constellation and it's the 18th brightest star in the sky with a first magnitude and it's the uh, brightest star within a vast stretch of sky uh, which gives it its name the loneliest star in the sky because formal hell arcs in a solitary splendor across the southern sky in autumn just kind of because it's one of the brightest stars in the sky uh, within a vast stretch of space, and people call it the autumn star uh, because of this. So there's a definite sense of uh, a theme of solid solitude with formal help that we can see here. Formal help is a light blue color, as you'll see from the diagram of the star pictured here. It is surrounded by a circumstellar disk, so it has like a kind of a ring of debris around it, which also potentially hosts a planet within this circumstellar disk. So it's named by the uh, ancient Persians as one of the four royal stars and is associated with Archangel Gabriel. The mythology of Piscus Ostridus is that it's known as the great fish. It is portrayed as swallowing the water that's being poured out by Ganymede, who is the uh, the mythology of Aquarius, the water bearer. And the two fish of the constellation Pisces are said to be the offspring of Piscus Ostrinus, this great fish. In Egyptian mythology, the fish saved the life of Egyptian goddess Isis. So she placed this fish and its descendants, Pisces, into the heavens as constellations of stars. So there's a theme of a connection here to Isis and this kind of divine mother archetype that we can see. So within the astrology of formal hope, we can see here at 2000, it is at three degrees, 53 minutes of Pisces. In 2024, it's shifted slightly into four degrees, 13 minutes of Pisces within its conjunct placement. It has a two, um, a two degree, 30 minute orb of influence and its opposition position is within the Virgo constellation. Its trine position is within Cancer, Scorpio, sextile, Taurus, Capricorn, and square position is Gemini and Sagittarius. So formal heart has, um, you know, quite a big orb of influence, which shows that it has, um, it has a lot of uh, energy, <laughs> a, a big expression of energy within this star. So it's interesting because it's conjunct. Pisces is definitely some of the Piscean qualities and its ruler Neptune within this star's expression. Formal Hot has a, a very idealistic view, some lofty visions and a dreamlike mentality. It is poetic, charismatic in its character. But there is often a need to balance this Piscean energy with a strong sense of grounding and a more pragmatic Virgo approach to bring out the best of its energy. Since formal heart has a strong Piscean connection to the vast field of the universe, there can be a strong psychic and prophetic gift within this star. The soul growth journey is to use a vast knowledge within the Akash that it has access to, but to ensure that it uses uh, this gift with integrity. So since Virgo is the oppositional position for this star, there are some similarities to the Virgo constellation and the way in which formal health journeys and grows as a consciousness. Virgo is connected to the tarot card, the hermit. And since formal hold is known as the loneliest star in the sky, there is a definite sense of journeying towards 
leadership, visibility, transparency, truth with this star. There's also um, periods of hiddenness and solitude and escapism that formal hope can go through in order to discover its own personal sense of self, its own sincerity, its own authenticity, autonomy and light. So it can step into the more Piscean nature that its conjunct position wants to become, where it's very expansive, very interconnected with the whole field of consciousness. There can be some illusions and mental limitations that formal hope goes through to become a powerful escapologist, freeing its mind from illusions of binds and falsities and limitations. Royal star formal heart, watcher of the south. So star formal heart is known as the watcher of the south, as one of the four royal stars as named by the ancient Persians, along with Regulus, Aldebaran and Antares. It is one of the four universal guardians holding space for the divine blueprint in this universe. It is connected to the whitish silvery ray associated with Mother Mary, Isis, and other divine mother figures. The silver ray is a divine mother nature which carries understanding, kindness, mercy, and justice at its heart. It is a very fertile, creative, and receptive expression that knows how to hold space safely for the journeys of others. Since this star is associated with Archangel Gabriel, there is a sense of communication that is held within the core of this star's expression. Archangel Gabriel was the herald and messenger to Mother Mary about the immaculate conception of Jesus Christ within biblical, biblical text. Archangels are powerful beings and create bridges and connections across the universe whilst carrying messages across his time-space continuum operating on quantum levels. The Archangel Gabriel frequency carries activating and healing frequencies through communication and divine messages that really promote the manifestation of divine will. Formalhaut is associated with the element of fire across the four royal stars, showing its ability to burn away what no longer serves, the universal alignment in order to create more room for the unquenchable holy fire of unconditional love. Formal hope and its connection to Christ consciousness and ascended mastery. Formal hope is a star associated with the spiritual path and those on this journey will develop this, their relationship with the divine to become more and more aware of the fullness of the divine nature from within. Formalhaut is a star that is associated with Christ consciousness and many ascended masters. Jesus Christ is probably one of the most popularized ascended masters known on earth today. His healing and teaching ministry for the collective of earth helped to usher in the age of Pisces and bring a higher consciousness to the earth around 2000 years ago. His crucifixion, resurrection and ascension gave hope and gives hope to this day to those who follow a spiritual path to the possibility of immortality and transcending the ego and illusionary limitations of the human body. Many ascended masters are associated with Formalhaut and the great white brotherhood who carry a divine masculine expression that also connected to this star. This is something that is definitely up for interpretation. And I want you to find the, the truth that resonates for you in regards to what an ascended master is. But for me, it's, it's a human who has transcended the egoic nature of the body and awakened the Kundalini energy to the pineal gland through the Nadi system to become one with the universal mind and enlightened. Formal hope 
and its connection to ancient Israel and the Essene community. So the Essenes were known as a community living in the time period of ancient Israel from around 200 BC to 100 AD. It was a brief time of certain souls incarnating into the Middle East with a sole mission of creating and being part of a community that ushered in Jesus Christ and his ministry on earth. Jesus had given himself a huge mission on a savior path to show the power of life, love and light to those on earth. The Essenes were part of a sect around the outskirts of Jerusalem who had a few different communal spaces with walls built around their community to give them safety from the Roman Empire and even the local Judaic Pharisees and Sadducees. Eventually, there was a destruction of the Essenes and their various community, but they had their own beautiful mystery schools and would travel to Egypt where they had close connection to Egyptian mystery schools too. The Egyptian mystery school had more of a Syrian expression and connection, whereas the Essene mystery schools were more associated with formal hosts, messages and teachings from a starseed perspective. However, they seemed to bring teachings to one another during this time, bringing higher consciousness to the earth and those who were willing to move into these frequencies of consciousness. If you feel connected to the Essenes and there's something that really resonates with you about this, I would recommend checking out some of these possible resources um, in order to find out more from you know, channeled perspectives on what this period of time uh, was like. There's some great lists of resources here. We've got Jesus and the Essenes by Dolores Cannon. The Way of the Essenes by Anne and Daniel Murios Gavarden, Anna, Grandmother of Jesus by Claire Hartstrong, and the Essenes Children of Light by Stuart Wilson and Joanna Prentice. So, Formal Holt's Star Seed Genetics. Now, again, use your intuition here and find what resonates with you. But from my discoveries and discoveries of those that I've uh, I've connected with in regards to formal home, um, there seems to be a real journey to become flow masters, as these starseeds live from their intuition and ensure the technology of their body is in an optimal condition to live in flow consciousness. There is a potential for great synchronicity magic and incredible manifestation to unfold in the lives of these star seeds in which their reality can become miraculous the examples of some of these principles of the way of living on earth are among the taoist traditions they program belief systems of limitlessness co-creating with the universal wisdom and finding radical acceptance and trust in every circumstance the formal hot star seeds are mystics who have a passionate love for the divine and really love to delve into the treasures that come from the darkness and bring out the gold within those they connect with. There's a merciful and grace giving nature to these star seeds, and they love to love without limits. The throat chakra and creative communication is a big part of the power of the formal hot star seed genetic. They are wordsmiths and chanting chanters and gifted speakers from their hearts. Music expression and song can be part of the formal held starseed and their gifts. They may have a great ear for music and be in tune with the universal sound and could even have perfect pitch. The formal held starseed is on a journey to become one with the breath of God and be a channel of the divine within every living breath they take. So Farmal Hout has a connection to the Cartesian DNA. It's obviously uh, Piscus Ostranus is known as the, uh, as the great fish or the southern fish. And uh, there's often a sense of a connection to the dolphin and whale starseed DNA, also called the Cartesian DNA, according to Lissa Royal Holt. 
The formal halt dolphins and whales are somewhat similar to those who are incarnated on Earth, but I sense they live in a higher dimension on formal halt. Due to the Piscus ostrinus being the great fish, the southern fish, it makes sense that there would be an experience to incarnate in these bodies on this star. Here are some of the beautiful qualities and expressions of these creatures. Dolphins really know how to live in the now and have a great depth of presence in their living experience. They know how to make the most of every moment and live life to the full. The dolphin expression is thankful and always full of gratitude. They even find gratitude for future timelines that they are manifesting. Forgiveness is in their nature and it's easy for them to forgive even some of the most hurtful and harmful things that can be part of their experience. They have an ability to experience joy in life and find a great strength in their joyfulness, always managing to have an optimistic outlook on life. The whale experience is deep and expansive. There's a greatness to their potential for awareness. They have an ability to look within the vast field of consciousness, even into the depths of the ocean, and can hold a lot of information in their minds. One of the great gifts about whale consciousness is that it can hold multiple dimensions, timelines, perspectives, and levels of consciousness within its mind, and find a sense of synchronicity among all these aspects. They love to explore worlds of consciousness in their dream time in order to bring whatever needs to come to the surface of the conscious mind in order to awaken. So Formal Holt has a bit of an ascension journey and some archetypal shadows within its path. So I'm just going to talk about a few of these archetypal shadows that I see. The Escapist. One of the many shadow archetypes of formal heart is the escapist, and a tendency can be to relate to life through avoidance to the point of finding ways to numb the intensity of experience and use substance abuse and other modes of escapism. There is also great wisdom in escapism, and sometimes it's wonderful to go and watch a film or a play at the theatre and just laugh and enjoy yourself for the pure joy of it all. And this is escapism at its best. So the hermit archetype, as previously mentioned, the hermit can use solitude as a way of avoidance and hiding from whatever the ego perceives as dangerous. This often comes from fear and separation. But the hermit in all its glory really wants to enjoy alone time, to discover a deeper sense of self and find the light from within them. Often formal hope can have a more introverted nature and really enjoy recharging on their own. So the victim archetype, it really wants to learn how to see themselves as a creator of their reality, no matter what the circumstance, and really understand how they have chosen to go through certain circumstances for their own sense of empowerment and expansion of light from the shadow. The sufferer archetype often has a desire to suffer so they don't become a target for envy and jealousy. Formal heart has great gifts within it, and sometimes people living in lack can target those with formal heart's gifts to try and take the light away. The learning here is to become more resilient and raise a vibration through this experience. So they move into higher planes of existence, which takes them out of the frequency of that lack experience. The saviour archetype, even though there can be great wisdom within this experience, there is also great shadow. It comes from the belief that someone outside of us needs saving because their circumstance or level of consciousness is wrong or not where it needs to be. An example is Jesus coming to earth and being who he was and expressing himself to then go through what he went through with his crucifixion. Something he knew would happen. It doesn't mean it wasn't perfect and needed for earth's ascension, but his path lacked acceptance. Acceptance is key here. The martyr 
is similar to the saviour. However, the martyr takes on the negative energy of others and chooses to go through that experience of negative consciousness in order to heal it for them. The gift here is that they can become powerful healers, but oftentimes this comes at their detriment. A great uh, motto or, or kind of um, a foundation to live by is to give it all to God, source to the creator. The runaway con uh, archetype, because part of formal heart's essence is to really seek after the divine, they can often move out of resonance with people in their lives due to their constant desire for evolution to higher states of consciousness. Sometimes they find in order to create safety for themselves in their newfound consciousness, they leave others on the path behind. The learning here is to find different depths to boundaries within friendships. So finally, the dictator archetype, because formal hope can become a pathway to the divine, oftentimes these paths that people can create become religions and traditions that lose the essence of the divine and instead become tools to dictate how people should live. Giving freedom is a beautiful thing and holding multiple paths and ways to love life and light helps ease the need to be preachy or pushy. So formal hold service and mission, because formal holds uh, gifting is huge heartedness and expansive love. Um, the service and the mission can really be expressed this way. Loving the person in front of you can be enough for someone with lots of formal heart expression. This love that formal heart comes into from potentially challenging and even hard experiences carries so much healing power within it. This is power in its essence, a holy fire of unconditional love moving through anything and everything that needs healing to come into alignment with divine will. If love is the only energy that exists in the highest reality of experience, maybe is all this is all that we need and all that we need to, to do to find alignment. And it's as simple as this. Every one of us is healing one another through choosing love. And it's not always easy and it sometimes seems impossible. But if we choose to pursue being love above all else, this will bring the healing that the world needs. Sometimes we may feel that someone around us doesn't want to be loved and we appease them and limit our expression in this world. But that's up to them and they have free will as to whether they can receive that love or not. But it doesn't necessarily mean that we should stop or limit our own expression, service and mission. Keep your love on is a great motto to live by. There are so many ways in which we can express love and its healing power. And the service of formal heart is to find the ways in which you want to express this love from your own unique expression. For example, you could express it through a healer career, an acting or singing career, or as a teacher or spiritual teacher. Maybe you want to become a public speaker or a voice and speech teacher. Maybe you want to write and create, whether that's fiction, non-fiction, song lyrics, or even you know, make sweet music to the sounds of life and love. There are endless expense, expansive ways in which formal health star seeds can express their gifts and bring love into this world through many forms. So this is the end of the uh, presentation and teaching on formal halt. Um, but I hope this helps you. Uh, please take whatever resonates with you and just let go of the rest. And um, I hope it supports you on your path as you connect to this star and you begin to understand and integrate more of the frequencies of this star. God bless.